This is the Dan <laughs> moose call. The, the world famous sick moose call. Uh. Okay, I admit, my moose call stinks, but living on the road full time in our RV does allow us plenty of opportunities to see wildlife. You're absolutely right, honey. Your moose call stinks. <laughs> We were very fortunate. We got to spend about a month in just outside of Rocky Mountain National Park. Now we did stay at two different campgrounds. Yeah. And we actually extended our stay there because, because we, we just enjoyed it so, it so much. We have so much footage, it's, it's unbelievable. And that's why we're kind of splitting this up a little bit. Right. We already did a short video on our tent camping and night. A wonderful <laughs> tent camping night in the park. You're not gonna... In the freezing cold rain. <laughs> Rodeo was a muddy mess, but it's okay. I Go enjoyed ahead, it. <laughs> yeah. We'll never forget it. That's yeah, you're not going to want to miss that. So if you haven't had a chance, check that video out after watching this yeah. video. It was a lot of fun. Probably an, an epic fail. <laughs> but we also want to do a video on just the, the wildlife that we've seen in the park. And yeah. we're going to probably follow this video up with some of our adventures we did as well. But we really want to concentrate strictly on the wildlife because for this video. so much of it. So much. Now, before even getting into Rocky Mountain National Park, if you're looking for wildlife, and if you happen to be there at the right time of year, we were there in September, October time frame, all you have to do is go to Estes Park. Now, Estes Park is on the eastern side or the eastern entrance of Rocky right. Mountain National Park. It's in, I believe it's Laramir County, Laramere, Colorado. Or something, something like, that. like that. Yeah, it has a population of about 6,000 people. Right. It's honestly, it's, it's a tourist town, but it's, it's actually a pretty cool it little town. Cool town. We're going to talk more about that in our next video, our follow-up yeah. video. But the, the elk rut happens in September, October time frame. If you're at Estes Park, all you have to do, and I'm not exaggerating, sometimes the elk will be walking right down Main Street. Yeah. So they're not too, too hard to find. However, if you are having a little bit of a problem finding them, go, get off the main road. Think like an elk yeah. would think. They're looking for grass. They want to eat, right? Yeah. So one of the nicest, greenest places in town for grass is the public or the, the golf course. Yeah, they, <laughs> and they go there. And they go there. So on the southeastern part of town, they have the golf course. That's a great place to start looking. Lots of times the elk will hang out there as well. And then on the north end, I believe, there's a residential area. Yeah, we and actually... There's a lot of them back there. Yeah, we got really, really lucky. We went yeah. just driving through the northern part of town, just kind of going through some side roads, some neighborhood roads. Right. We saw one of the biggest elk I think we've biggest, ever seen in our lives. Uh, right. And we've seen... We've been fortunate enough to see quite a bit of, of big bull owls, but this was a massive one. Huge. Again, it's just being at the right place at the right time. Yeah. This is pretty cool as well. The next thing I want to talk about a little bit is the bighorn big sheep. And this was definitely a, a blessing to see these. Definitely. Now, believe it or not, the bighorn sheep in Rocky Mountain National Park in the early 1900s, almost they were almost extinct. There was like almost none in the park. This was um, through diseases and predators. Right. And the state of Colorado got things under control. And now the park has approximately 300 to 400 bighorn sheep. In the park. So right. that, that's, a, that's a good thing. We were truly blessed. We got to see a good chunk of these. And honestly, on our way, into the park we weren't even into the park we were on big thompson big thompson canyon road big thompson canyon road and this goes highway 34 but yeah oh yeah highway 34 this is between loveland and estes mm -hmm. park going uh, west into rocky mountain national park it's a beautiful drive through the canyon it really is yeah but these canyons are sh some of them are sheer cliffs we happened to get lucky we were came around a corner there's a bunch of cars parked on the side of the road so we knew something was happening right luckily for us there's a place to park we got out and we probably seen 20 or 30 bighorn yeah, sheep even babies and, and this was yeah this was really really yeah. cool because they were literally 
15, 20 feet away from us in the rock. So that was. And they the, blend in so well. They really do, yeah. yeah. They were actually we were hard like, to what see. Are they looking yeah. At? <laughs> they were really, really hard to see. But once, once you s realize what you're looking for, you, you mm -hmm. can pick them up pretty well. Yeah. So we actually spent quite a bit of time there yeah. looking at the bighorn sheep. Now, as far as Rocky Mountain National Park goes, they normally hang out at sheep lakes and this is kind of in the northeastern part of the park and the quickest way to get there is Fall River Visitor Center. The next animal we want to talk about are coyotes. Yes. I know a lot of people don't like coyotes, but they were actually a They're blast cool. to watch. We were at Sheep Lakes looking for moose. We didn't see any that night, by the way. Right. But we did see a family of coyotes, and they were a blast. They were out in the field, maybe 100 yards from us. Right. We could watch them running around. We're they had hear them yapping. <laughs> Yeah, and, it was like... and we didn't know this, but they can run up to 40 miles an hour yeah. and they can jump as high as 12 feet or more. That's that, like amazing. That surprised me. Something yeah. else that surprised me with coyotes is they can actually take down elk. Yeah. I'm sure I'm assuming these are the smaller calves, but I never thought coyotes could take down elk. Yeah, they'll I think eat working together. Probably, yeah, probably. But they'll eat elk, deer. deer. Um, small rodents, rodents, of course, and they'll actually eat plants and, and Gra grass yeah, and grass things and like that. So that kind of like surprised that. us yeah. with, with the coyotes. And they also will take over a badger hole to use as their den. Yeah, that was pretty, so they're sneaky little guys yeah. too. <laughs> so if you're a badger, you're watch, out for your, yeah. <laughs> watch out for your badger hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we found them at Sheep Lakes. Um, you, we talked to a ranger. You can also find them lots of times in uh, Moraine, Park. Moraine Park and then also Beaver, Beaver Meadows. Beaver Meadows. Those are yeah. a couple other good places. So if you're looking for coyotes, there's some options for you as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go on to some of the other wildlife that we got to see, let's talk a little bit about some tips or some things that we use to help us find wildlife. The very first thing we did, and we found that this out fairly quickly, talk to the park rangers yeah. and this was extremely helpful they're there every day or most you know most of the time they know the patterns they know where the animals hang out and they have walkie talkies and they communicate with each other yeah exactly it, something we found out and especially with the larger animals like the elk yeah. and um maybe the bighorn sheep the Even moose, the moose yeah. definitely whenever there's those big animals next to the road or one of the highways you're pretty much guarantee you're gonna see a park ranger there. Yeah. They use walkie talkies, so if there's a herd of elk at a certain part of the road, they'll communicate with each other and say, hey, I need some rangers here to protect the wildlife and also protect the visitors, visitors as well. Too. So talk to the park rangers. Hopefully they'll give you some honest advice of where, you know, where the animals are headed yeah. and definitely what time of day yeah. they're there as well. Look for people that are pulled over. That's, That's the other the thing sure that sign. we do, sure. we do this in every national yeah. park we go to and if you've been to national parks I'm sure you're already aware of this yeah. just look for people pulled over on the side of the road if they're not pulled over for a trailhead more than likely it's wildlife and yeah. something's going on right there so that's something we always do is just look for people pulled over on the side of the road right 
And this is something that we actually just learned yeah. this trip here, yep. and it really paid off. Look for professional photographers, yep. and this really helped us out. When I say professional photographers, I'm talking about the people with lenses You'll like know this. Who they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, they got the big lenses. They look like they're with National, <laughs> National Geographic or something like that. That's your guy. Yeah, but what we found out is. A lot, I don't know if they're professionals, but we're going to yeah. call them professionals. A lot of these professional photographers, they're, you know, you're there on vacation, you're there one or two weeks a year. They, a lot of them live in the area, they know the animals, they know the patterns. Yes. Very, very good example. We were in Moraine Park, um, we had a bunch of elk kind of yeah. walking towards us a little bit, and right. I, I set up to kind of get ready when they got closer. Right. I noticed about 100 yards down to my right, there was probably a half a dozen of these professional photographers. They were setting up about 100 yards away from me. So I took a chance, I moved down by them, and sure enough, the elk followed the trail right in front of these photographers, mm -hmm. and we got some great uh, video and right. some great uh, pictures, images, yeah. pictures as well. So look for the professional photographers. Don't be afraid to go up and talk to them. A oh, lot yeah. of them, we talked to a few of them, they yeah. were, they're more than That's happy to, nice. to help, um, out. help out and uh, extend their <laughs> knowledge a little bit. So. Professional photographers is another uh, great, great way to help hopefully find some wildlife. Now, once you do find the wildlife, a couple of things that we try to do, this is just common courtesy, I think, and also so we don't scare the wildlife off. If we're in our vehicle, especially we're in a diesel, they're pretty loud. We'll pull up, you know, kind of get in line. Uh, we don't want to block the road. We always right. want to pull over into a parking lot area or at least all the way onto the shoulder. Right. We always turn the engine off. Yep. And if we have our headlights on, we always always turn the headlights off as well. We don't want to scare the animals. And, and if people are taking video, they don't want to hear our truck right. running in the background. True. The other thing we do is when we get in and out wow. of our vehicle, we close our doors quietly. Right. I would feel like a total jerk yeah. if I slam my door and it caused deer yeah. or elk or moose to run off because it was scared. We For would sure. probably be the bad guys. Huh? Yeah. We so, feel really bad too. Yeah, definitely. So we just always close our doors as well. Yeah. So those are some tips on how to find the, the wildlife and what to do when you find the wildlife. Yeah. If you find stuff like this helpful, please subscribe to our channel. We really need all the help we can get. Apparently we're not very good at this. So <laughs> please subscribe and help us out. Make sure you hit the like button as well. Yeah, we'd really appreciate it. Help us out a lot and let YouTube know that you like us. <laughs> the next animal we're going to talk about are the wild turkeys in the park. One of your favorites. Yeah, I love the, I love listening to them gobble during their mating season. It's, it's pretty cool. But they've got some big old wild turkeys <laughs> in the park. They, they can do. actually get up to 46 inches big. And that's a big Huge. old turkey. That's a lot of meat. Yeah, it is. <laughs> But you'll normally find them in the ponderosa pines in the lower elevations, usually below 8,000 feet. If you are fortunate enough to come up on some wild turkeys and you happen to scare them, they're more apt to run away from you than to fly away right. from you. They have extremely good eyesight as well. So if you do happen to like to, to watch the turkeys, you're trying to get some pictures, go slow and take your time. Again, look in the pines, usually the below 8,000 feet. Now yeah. we happen to see them on Bear Lake, Bear Lake Road, Road and Sprague and Lake, Sprague Lake area. area. So just drive the road yeah. slowly. They blend in again really well, they so do. they're kind of hard to see. Take your time. I think with any wildlife, you can't really go rushing around. You just drive slow, take your yeah. time and enjoy it yep. and look for them. But wild turkeys, they're actually pretty cool as well. Let's hear your turkey call, honey. <laughs> gobble, 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 gobble. <laughs> oh, look at them all. Oh, yeah. All right there. That's right where there. they are. Was he calling them? Maybe. Maybe those are turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrible. Are there any gobblers? Oh, the one in the back is a gobbler up there. Is he? I think so. Oh, and this one, maybe? Yeah, I think this one is. I'm looking for moose, and what do we get? Turkeys. Before we get on to these next three, now these are the big boys of the big park, I think. I forgot to mention, when you're looking for wildlife, we talked about talking to the rangers, um, looking for the park cars, looking for professional photographers. Yeah. I also wanted to mention, too, your 
best opportunity is early morning and also at, at oh, dusk. Yeah, Those are kind dusk. of the, the magic hours as yeah. well. So I did forget to tell you that, but I wanted to, just to mention it. Now, everything that we've seen or we're going to talk about in the video, we did see yeah. randomly throughout the day, throughout but the day those too, but are the peak hours. Yeah, to, to, most active are yeah. dawn and dusk. Yep. Now the three big boys of the yeah. park. We'll start out with the smaller of the three, um, the mule deer. The mule deer are everywhere. They're everywhere. We had they were it. We at actually a campsite. They hung out for every day. Yeah, they were. We actually put a list together of some of the places that we saw them, the different entrance stations and uh, visitor centers. But they're everywhere. Yeah. Just just remember everywhere. So fun to watch. Now they are like social animals. So yeah. if you see one, you're more than likely there'll be a few more hanging around as yeah. well. And these mule deer, they get. Big. They get up to 300 pounds and three feet at, at, the, at the shoulders. shoulders. So there's some pretty big deer, and the bucks are really cool, especially the mature bucks. The yeah. the antlers, the racks, them are just and uh, the babies. Um, the babies yeah. are so cute, but you can't you can't pet them or anything yeah. like that. They are wild animals. Yeah, all these animals are wild. They right. may look cute. You may want to go up and pet one, yeah. but um, we Don't do it. that's why we use telephoto lenses yeah. so it, um, yeah. we can keep our distance. And you know we're protecting the animals and we're, and we're protecting ourselves as well. Yeah. But the mule deer, they're very easy to distinguish between a white-tailed deer and a mule deer. Just look at their ears. They get yeah. their name because their ears are oversized. oversized ears. They look like mules. Yeah. So mule deer throughout the whole park, yeah. they're Their a lot of fun. predators are... Um, oh, mountain lions, mountain right? Mountain lions, bobcats, and coyotes. And coyotes, yeah. I didn't even know they had that mountain lions in the area. Yeah. Um, I personally, I didn't think a bobcat was big enough yeah. but apparently apparently they are yeah, maybe the so. smaller ones or something yeah and also they travel and Now on to Dina's favorite, the moose. The want me to do my call again? No, it's okay, honey. We need to work on that call a little bit. <laughs> the moose are actually the largest animals of the in the deer, deer family. In the deer family. What we did find out though is the moose in the park normally hang out on the western side of the park. Right. But what happened was in the fall of 2020, there was two large wildfires. And actually at the time, they were the largest wildfires in Colorado state history. Wow. And it literally burnt down a lot of the western side of the park. So now if you're a moose, you have no cover, you have yeah. nothing to eat, it's all burnt up. So what they did was a lot of the moose kind of migrated over to the eastern side of the park. Right. And we happened to see one at... Sprague, Sprague Lake? We didn't see or him Sheep at Sprague Lakes. Sheep Lakes. Sheep Lakes, Sprague. Your chances of seeing them are at Sheep Lakes, Sprague Lakes, and Fall, Fall River, River Road. Road. That's what the, the, rangers the rangers told us. us. And we did get to see a, a few of them at yeah. Sheep Lakes. We tried Sprague Lake a couple times, but we just... Right. We just missed, missed them. them. And Fall River Row, we didn't see. Oh, we did see one on. Oh, we know. Yeah, we did see a, a young bull. A young bull on Fall River Road. So oh, yeah. they are around. Right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there's so many thinking? we forget. Yeah. Um, but talking to the rangers, they did tell us as of September of 2022, the moose are starting to migrate back to the western side. I guess the vegetation starting is starting to, grow, to back. grow back. So they have some and cover have and, and stuff to eat as well. Yeah. So. Slowly you may have to surely. try the, the western side, uh, you know, much after September of, of 2022. The other pretty cool thing we found out with the, the moose, they can be up to 1,500 pounds. That's a lot of meat. Five to seven feet at shoulder. And height. this was pretty cool. We found this out too. The antlers, 
can oh, yeah. be 70 up to 77 pounds, pounds. that's a hell that's a hell that's, of a hat you got oh man can <laughs> I you walk imagine no? oh, and well. their antlers can be as wide as five feet five feet wide yeah so it's pretty yeah. massive wow. we did get to see a couple bulls pretty big pretty good sized bulls yeah uh, you'll probably see in the video and what they what they do we found out there's a lot of vegetation or a lot of natural vegetation that the park is trying to let regrow right. because it does get um, eaten, I guess, by yeah. all the animals and, right. and just gets gnawed down to nothing. So they right. do put some fences up around some of the vegetation. Yeah. The purpose for that, what we're told, is it helps to let the uh, vegetation grow. Yeah. So I think in one of our snippets of a moose, you'll see him behind, behind a, fence. a fence. And he actually and got stuck. Yeah. We found out that they had to go out there and open up a gate to get him out of there. So. Mm -hmm. In case yeah, you're curious, I didn't understand. Was the gate closed? I don't know, or he crawled under. Yeah, I, I don't know I don't what know. happened. Somehow he got in. Yeah. We found out it actually happens quite often. There was yeah. some elk that got stuck behind a fence too. They had to let out. But yeah, if really you do happen to see the yeah. fences, that's what's going on. They're trying to get right. the vegetation to grow up as well. There is a song ringing in my ear that I can. Someone's been singing to me for ages, dear. Some song I remember that I never can hear. Now on to my favorite animal, the elk. Also known as Wapiti. Wapiti. Somebody told us it means like white butt or white but, rump. Yes. That's what we're going with. Yeah. If you happen to know better or know differently, leave a comment below. I think it is. Because I'm kind of curious as well. But the elk, the elk for me made this whole trip. Animal. And we were extremely blessed. We got to be in the park in the September, October time frame, or, or late September, early October, which is yeah. right at the peak of the rut. If you never heard of the rut, it's the elk mating season. And this is where the big bulls are trying to get harem or all the females to, to mate with and they bugle so you hear them bugling all the time so and cool how would that sound oh, go you're Dina? gonna make me do it yes i am oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay it doesn't sound anything like <laughs> that <laughs> if you want to hear if you want to hear what elk sounds go to the park and listen <laughs> it is really really, really neat cool. and what's really really cool about this is this has kind of amazed us is how i guess popular how big the elk really are yeah. we went to part of the where they hang out is moraine park and we went down there a lot of evenings yeah. and there would literally be hundreds of people Everywhere. in the park They'd be out there in in their lounge chairs or their their tailgating, their tail, tailgating. And coolers and food. It was a picnic. They were just sitting there yeah. watching the elk and the elk. They put on a show. Yes, they did. It do. was nothing for some of these great big bulls to be within maybe 50 yards, 40 yards of the yeah. people. Sometimes a little bit closer. If they got a little bit too close, a lot of times the park rangers will move you back or maybe you get behind the cars. But the the elk. I just, per I, I love them, yeah, especially with um, salt and pepper. Oh, <laughs> they do taste good, by the way. No, but the elk are just amazing. Um, they Moraine Park. Yeah, Moraine Park, Bear Lake, Bear Lake, Beaver, Beaver Meadows. Meadows. They're, they're everywhere. They're kind of really everywhere. Everywhere in the park. If you don't happen to see any, talk to a park ranger. I'm yeah, sure they'll sure. guide you in the right direction. They're up to five feet at the shoulder. Yeah, tall. they're pretty big. Yeah. It's something else that really amazing. We just learned this for the video here. The the males, their antlers can actually grow an inch a day. That's crazy. That we is, never knew that. Yeah, I don't remember knowing that. Didn't have any that. idea. That is no. pretty amazing. And so. they're also social animals, and they like to travel in herds. Yeah, so if you see one, you're more than likely you're going to see 
see more right. than one as well. And there's currently six to eight, 600 to 800 in the park. Yeah, so the yeah. park itself, that's a good point. The park itself is trying to maintain the herd. They want to yeah. keep it somewhere between 600 and 800. And the reason for that, or one of the reasons, is for the land. The land can only support so many animals. Right. We right. talked earlier about putting fences up around some of the vegetation. This is part of the reason the vegetation gets eaten down so much and doesn't have time to regrow. Right. So they're trying to maintain the herd and also protect the vegetation at the same time. Right. When you walked into the room, I couldn't keep my eyes off of you. Was it make believe or was it a dream? I've been waiting all my life. Feels like I've struck a gold mine. Hopefully you get a chance to go to Rocky Mountain National Park. And if you've ever been there, leave a comment below. Let us know what, what wildlife you've seen, yeah. where you've seen it. Favorite. Maybe help somebody else go in there in the future. But hopefully you enjoy wildlife as much as we do and you found this video entertaining. For sure. Like we said before, we extended our stay two weeks because we were not ready to yeah. leave. <laughs> and we can't wait to go back. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We really hope that you enjoyed us sharing our wildlife experiences with you and hopefully you're a wildlife fan <laughs> remember always live life to the fullest safe travels and god bless see you next week go come on <laughs> wait that's not it wait start over okay. cut this part okay. out well, how does it go <laughs> and it's like, you ready? Okay, ready? <laughs> uh, no, hold on. Uh, we're doing. We're starting uh, over. Oh yeah. You ready? I can't. Wait a minute. Do it again. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, honey, <laughs> it's. She's looking at me like, what are you doing, Mom? <laughs>